Well, from uh, one end of the four string <laughs> spectrum to the other. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to cover three different artists who are no longer with us. <coughs> and uh, two of them will be artists who we lost this year. Um, you have a text message. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's upstaging me. You better answer um, that. <laughs> So, uh, so what two of the movie artists we lost this year? Oh, that's gonna be the third song, Peter. Just so you know, it'll be my last one. So, um, yeah, um, and one of the artists that I will be covering is one that I don't think anybody's covered yet, and I'm rather surprised at that one. The one that I thought no one would have covered has already been covered twice. Um, and uh, the first one is actually an artist that we lost. It will be 20 years tomorrow that this person died. And uh, they, are a little, they were a little known jazz composer named Joe Keelan, my dad. Yeah, so uh, he died 20 years ago tomorrow, three days after Valentine's Day. And uh, I'm gonna have a hard time even talking about this today, but... Um, <laughs> So my dad was a jazz composer, and when he was diagnosed with terminal cancer, I was just learning to sing, and I was starting to sing in a local chorus or something, and I had the audacity to think that perhaps I could try my hand at songwriting, and I thought it would be a fun little like bonding thing to do with my dad in the last months of his life. I said, Dad, let's write a song together. He says, great. Here's a piece I wrote years ago. You write the lyrics. And the piece was a, was a tune that he had written, you know, this complicated jazz piece, right? That he had written for this young man who died suddenly and unexpectedly. And the piece was called, And Now He's Gone. Mm. So from this happy little, like, fun project to do with my dad, <laughs> he says, write the lyrics to that, knowing, of course, that he would soon be gone and that I would be singing this after he's gone. So I, uh, I struggled for some time to write the lyrics. At the first, I just struggled to even get the tune in my head because it's a jazz piece. It's like there's no repetition anywhere in the thing, right? So to, just to get the whole thing in my head, I drove around playing it. And this is how long ago it was, 20 years ago, playing it on the cassette player in my car over and over again. And I just was trying to even get it in my head. And finally, to get it in my head, I had to write some dummy lyrics just so I could learn the tune. And then once I did that, I was able to write this write the lyrics and of course I knew that I was going to have to write about my dad mm -hmm. and uh, and then years later I picked up the ukulele and I got out his handwritten sheet music with all the scribbles and it was really hard to decipher and he used all this fancy jazz chord notation that I had to go like look up on Wikipedia and stuff to figure out what he meant and then figure out how to do it with only four strings because jazz chords a lot of times have more than that <laughs> Um, so I finally figured out how to put this thing to the ukulele and, and I can sort of almost play it. <laughs> so it's, uh, and it's under rehearsed of course, but we'll see how we do. Wow. So this is, and now he's gone by Joe Keelan and me, Wendy Keelan. You were always in my heart. You were there right from the start.
I would think hearing that down on the ukulele. <laughs> it's a much less complicated instrument than he was used to composing for. He composed a piece for a handbell choir once just because he heard them and he thought they were really cool. And he joined this contest to compose for a handbell choir. And he composed this complicated jazz piece for handbells, which is not the usual sort of idiom that they, that they play. And uh, so he didn't win the contest, but he, he thought he should have. And his piece was amazing. I still have, again, the handwritten sheet music that you know he penciled on uh, lyric paper. And, uh, and uh, I was telling somebody who had a handbell choir about this piece, and she said, oh, we'll play it. You know? So she got her handbell choir together to play it. Pretty cool. So oh, OK, so this one, I don't think I've heard anybody do Glenn Campbell yet, have we? How have we not done Glenn Campbell yet? So alas, you're stuck with me then. <laughs> Fumbling my way through this one. It also has some jazz chords. drums if you want. All right. We're going to cover. We're doing this. Let me rewind it, Mike, right here. All right. So, as Rob said, the greatest artist of all who died. Or you said greatest singer. Greatest singer. Greatest singer. Year, yeah, all right. I'll, 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 go, I'll go with that. <laughs> greatest singer who died this year. David Cassidy, we're going to do another Partridge Family song. You all know this one. Please sing along. You have the 45, I'm sure. I'm sure. It's the one. Uh, it's the one everybody knows. Yeah. Are you ready? I think I love it. Yeah. Two. Two. Ba 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 I'd hide it to myself 
down and never talk about it and did not go and shout it when you walked into the room. I don't know what it's all about. I don't know what I'm up against. I don't know what it's all about. I got so much to think about. Hey, I think I love you. One of them is named Cassidy, you know. <laughs> there you go. I'm thinking that's not a coincidence. <laughs> and featuring Peter on the harp start for it, and I totally screwed up. I'm sorry.